You might never have heard of tularemia, but the Department of Defense has and awarded an $18 million contract to local scientists to research and create a protective vaccine. Tularemia is often referred to as rabbit fever, and the goal for the vaccine is to protect humans for up to one year. It is geared toward our men and women in uniform deployed overseas. Tularemia is a disease that is often missed by doctors because it's so rare. This so-called rabbit fever is not dangerous if transmitted through a cut in the skin, but when aerosolized, it can be deadly. That's usually like if you were skinning a rabbit, it's called rabbit skinner's disease. Um, or if you got it bit by a tick that had this organism in it, you might get a little bit sick. But the problem is when um, the organism is actually um, it somehow makes its way into the air, so it's a bacterium, and if it makes its way into the air and it gets into your lungs, then you can come down with a very serious and frequently fatal disease, um, which is called mnemonic tularemia. In fact, just 10 of the organisms, if inhaled, can cause a fatal tularemia infection. Our concern is that this potential bioweapon, we have no defense against it. And so my laboratory is trying to develop a vaccine that will allow people to not even have to think about it anymore. If we can be vaccinated against the organism, then we don't have to worry about the potential misuse of tularemia. So UTSA is partnering with Southwest Research Institute in developing the tularemia vaccine. It will hopefully be approved by the FDA and eventually used by the Department of Defense. This is gonna benefit all of society, to be honest with you. It's not just for the military. However, the military has the greatest interest in a vaccine against this because they consider soldiers to be the very, the likely people to be in, in line of fire, essentially. So this is something that could potentially be used in warfare. Uh, some bio-warfare uh, incident, or first responders as well. It is for that reason that the bacterium is now considered a threat to national security. Bacteria are con artists of sorts and get smart about protecting themselves from things like vaccines. People have heard of anthrax before, and they've heard of plague before. Those are also two organisms that sort of fall in the same category, and tularemia. So they're actively pursuing um, vaccines and all th against all three of those organisms in order to protect our troops around the world. In times of war, there are other things involved in getting the vaccine to the troops, such as how to transport it once it makes its way overseas. Things like being able to stabilize it so it can be stored for a long period of time, it can be stockpiled, or it can be transported in a vehicle that doesn't have refrigeration. People don't consider this kind of thing, but it's what we call elimination of cold chain. And when you go to a, a theater, when you go to a war and it's in a desert and you have a material that has to be kept at minus 20 degrees Celsius, it may never get to them in an effective manner you know, to actually be used as it was intended. And right now, because inhaled tularemia is very dangerous, the experiments are being conducted using another bacterium that is close to tularemia in makeup, but doesn't harm humans. We have a lot of natural defenses in our skin and our body is really good at repelling invaders. It does it all the time, every day. And the problem is with the lungs is it's a little bit closer to home, so to speak. You know, there's a lot of surface area, there's a lot of blood vessels that are really close and they don't have that natural protection that, get, that you're, you're given by your skin and those kinds of things. Um, the vaccine that we would like to develop would like to be one where you do go into the skin because it's easier to disseminate. It's, you know, it's a, a subcutaneous or intradermal injection, a real small injection like that. They have lots of capabilities that we really know nothing about. So this is a really nice partnership that we've developed now where we can take our vaccine to the next level and hopefully we're inching closer to having something that will eventually be able to be used in humans.